Hi everybody, and time for another edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. And Sam and I, as always, are well happy to welcome the CHS Athletic Director, Brent Duncan. Hi, Brent. Happy to be back. <laughs> you guys doing all right? Star, beautiful star day of the outside. show here. <laughs> well, you know, coaches are busy at this time of season, so it's hard to get them in here That's at this right. time. So. A couple postponements <laughs> Saturday because of the rain, and have you made up uh, making We are yet? working on schedules. They're okay. like us. It's, you know, within three and a half weeks of being at the end of the season, it's getting crunch time, so... Spent the day working with uh, Cambridge City with tennis a little bit yeah. for uh, Lawrenceburg and softball and trying to work on uh, Anderson and baseball. And it's a real it's, problem, uh, isn't it? We're getting there. I think we're going to make baseball possibly as a three-way at Anderson with Anderson one game and Huntington North another game. So that would be different. So got to get coaches' approval first. But <laughs> that would be, I think, May, eight, May 18th, I think, so. It's been a problem this year, hasn't it? Uh, we've kind of been lucky for the most part. Really? So I've counted days where we've had lots of rainouts, but so far baseball has only lost the one game, and softball lost one early with Oldenburg, and we were make, made up at least one of that doubleheader. So tennis is now trying to get tennis in. So we're working on it. Yeah, it's tough to find an open day to both ends. Yeah, just because of the number of games that you can play in the sure. short period of time that you can get them in. And of course, mm -hmm. we all play all of our conference games, but then you got to play people that are in your sectional, and then you got your normal rivals that you have, and trying to squeeze all those in there. And unfortunately for us in baseball, our sectional opponents are Friday night double hugger team, so that throws Friday nights out of our loops because they're all playing, and they don't want to play on Saturday because they just played a double header on Friday <laughs> night. So it makes it a little bit harder with our sectional opponents. So uh, Football coming up shortly. Um, Spartans open at Richmond. Yep. And uh, Franklin County has been from 4A to 3A. Day. So that means in the conference there are five 3As and three 4As. Four four and the Connorsville has to play. 4A teams to be in that. No, it's, that just happened to work out last time. It's The bylaws say the four largest schools are in the big class. Oh, okay. And the four next, the smaller schools are in. So we're going to have a 3A school in the big division. Just happened to be all 4As and 3As the last few years. Now it's one of those 3As is going to be in the big class, so in the conference. So I think Franklin County is uh, our conference They're still the next school. one, so right. it'll still Along be the with. same four we've been playing. So. Okay, so that would be South Dearborn. East Central West in Franklin County. Okay. And that'll determine who wins that for the big side. Okay. Yeah, they didn't want to call it big school, little school. So <laughs> that's truly the, the you four are gonna largest get, You are going to get that taken care of where there's going to be one champion in Well, we keep football. working on it. We're, we got a few of us to keep working on, but you got to get everybody in agreement. So that's not always the easiest thing to do. But uh, So some schools really like it that way. Yeah. And they like to play some of those other schools outside the conference. Yes. So yeah, outside they like the state. That's true, too. Yeah, they're going to Ohio, right. Ohio, Kentucky, and mm -hmm. based on where they're at and size of schools. So that could be a little longer road to hoe. <laughs> but we keep, we keep chipping away. As Mr. Beard said, if you, if you try to kill all the rabbits, you're going to get run over by the elephants. And I told him <laughs> if I killed all the rabbits, maybe there wouldn't be any more elephants. So we'll keep taking our shots at those little things to see if we can make it better for the big things. So. Okay, the August 23rd, you open at Richmond. Franklin County will be the first home game on the 30th. And that, as you pointed out, will work toward the Work towards our conference, conference start right there. Right. So we'll be right out of the shoot at home. So. Greensburg on September 6th. So. That will be, that'll be on September 7th. At Lucas Oil Stadium. Okay, I heard really? that might happen, right? I think we're at the 12 o'clock game, so. And against who? It'll be against Greensburg. Oh, okay. So. Is this uh, more than two schools? It'll be there? four games that day, so we'll sell tickets here. We'll have some more information coming out here in the near future. Uh, just finalizing some things with uh, Ryan Walston, who spearheaded it at South Dearborn, so. What's the date of that again? September 7th. We usually play Friday night, Greensburg, September 6th, which is our home game, but it will mm -hmm. be at Lucas Oil. And so Labor Day be, weekend? Is that Labor Day weekend? I think it's the weekend after Labor Day. Okay. But, um, so it will be listed as a home game? Yeah, yeah. so okay. we'll be the home game. We'll supply the officials, and mm -hmm. then we all split the, the gate profits. Mm -hmm. So we'll hopefully everybody will bring a big crowd. And That's we'll kind of have a good, Does good this day. have a name? Of yeah, I think they're calling it the Southeastern Shootout. <laughs> but I have to check my paper, but I think that's what some people voted for or not. Well, I'm sure all the kids that get to play in Lucas Oil are thrilled. 
Yeah, I mean, it's something we've talked about in the past just for the experience of being able to play in Lucas Oil. You know, we used to play in a Hoosier Dome a few years back. Mm -hmm. and whether you make it there to state finals or not, it's just that experience of getting the kids inside there and having them run out of the tunnel. And we're going to try to get our youth kids involved. And if they get there, we're going to let them line up on the field and let the kids run through them from both ends and try to make it a day of everybody. Oh, so sounds, sounds it's like us and Greensburg. And guys, don't quote me on this, but uh, game three is South Dearborn and Batesville, I think. And uh, Milan and Lawrenceburg is the last game because East Central is not coming because they're not in the conference that week. Mm -hmm. So Lawrenceburg and then uh, whoever I miss, grew. the second game would be South Dearborn. Not South Dearborn, but so it's mostly Franklin Eastern County and Rochester. Eastern Indiana for the for the conference it's our conference minus East Central and Milan will be playing okay. Lawrenceburg that day. All right. All right. So we're going to try to get all of our youth kids involved and get them up there. And we'll start selling tickets here before long, but they're in the process of getting the tickets lined up with the Lucas Oil and the promoters, and mm -hmm. it'd be a big day. So oh, if you want to come and see the price of one admission, will get you into all four games. So be a great day. If you like football, it's a great place to be for, for four days. So is the noon game the second game? or That's is it the first game. The first game. It'll okay. be the opening shot right out of the chute. So mm. yeah. our coach was good with it, and their coach was good with it. And so, and we let South Dearborn pick because they put it together, so they <laughs> picked game three. So that's which exciting. Is only fair. So it'd be good for our kids. So, yes, it will. You know, just like our boys played in the Lucas, our banker's life a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and just the experience of playing in the gym and having that neat experience as a high school kid. So exciting for we old broadcasters as well. <laughs> well, if they put you in the crow's nest to broadcast, it's a long way down from yeah. the top of Lucas Oil. <laughs> yeah. I've been up there. Have you, you look like little miniature bees Take on the, the ground. The there, field so. glasses. So, yeah. You might need a few. I know we're getting older, all of us, so it's a little further down there to see. Uh, this won't be the first time that you've had a connection with the Colts, so have you? Haven't you used their practice facility? We have our, we have, they have a seven-on-seven seven thing that our football oh, okay. kids I go knew, to. So. I thought our football team yeah. had, had played at Indy, and it was at the yeah. facility for the They've Colts. They've had some seven-on-seven some seven stuff with our kids in the summertime that they've been to their complex out at, mm -hmm. on the west side that's of what Indianapolis. I thought, right. so. Oh, that's great. I know those kids are, are excited. I'd heard about this earlier that uh, Adam Kelly told me, young Adam told me uh, that at one of the uh, basketball games we were doing, he said, I've got good news for you. And he talked about that. And I hadn't heard anything about it officially until tonight. Well, we couldn't officially get it out until after the Colts came out with their schedule to make sure there really <laughs> wasn't any games there on September 7th, which the NFL doesn't usually play on that okay. that early in September on Saturdays. but. Mm -hmm. Now that it's out, I think Mr. Walston has the contract in his hand, and now it's just all finding what we if we want the jumbotron on. Do we want the roof open for thirty-five thousand extra dollars? I think you can open the roof. But, you know, <laughs> so yeah. a lot of tickets. <laughs> the problem if you open the roof is if range is going to get it shut anyway. So, uh, but uh, there'll be a lot of a la carte stuff that we have to stop and look at as a sure. group. We'll meet here again in the next month or so to finalize mm -hmm. everything we need. So. It's exciting. I guess so. And then with uh, Phil Cox thing in basketball, it, uh, it's going to be an interesting season. Yeah, that'd be another good experience for our kids. It's not been to Kokomo and played in their gym. Mm -hmm. It's a historic gym just like us, and it's a, it's a big gym. And just the tradition of the basketball program in Kokomo will be good. So Yes, right. Okay, back to uh, after the Greensboro game on the 7th, uh, the Spartans will travel to South, De South Dearborn on September the 13th at Rushville on the 20th. On the 27th, Jennings County comes here for a game. Uh, October the 4th, it will be East Central. Uh, Lawrenceburg, it will be at, e at East Central this year, isn't it? Or is it home game? We're home against Lawrenceburg. Oh, okay. Home against Lawrenceburg on the 11th at Batesville on the 18th. Sam's favorite place to uh, <laughs> to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe someday they'll get a new press box down there. Yeah. Uh, and the, the all the games except on Saturday and then at East Central games start at 7 o'clock. East Central, uh, they have to be different. They start at 7.30. Well, they had the option. They talked about it a couple years ago. Some of the schools, because their field sets east and west, the sun gets a little better chance to <laughs> set down so it's not right in the kids' eyes. And theirs is one of those that sets east and west, so they want to opt to start at 730. Yeah. But if you remember 20 years ago, they all started at 730. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. not, not not anymore. So yeah. ours isn't quite truly east and west. Ours is a little <laughs> northeast, southwest, or southeast, northwest. So we don't have that direct. Of course, if you know you go to Rushville, it's a north-south. And if you're sitting on our sideline, it's not very pleasant at 7 o'clock. That's right. Visitors are in a lot of sun, so. yes, at that game, right. right. I know Adam's working hard to uh, turn the season around because he and all the kids were very disappointed over last season. Yeah, I think I don't think the parents and the fans realize how much time they actually put in and try to get things done mm -hmm. the right way and 
how much time he spends with the youth program and trying to organize that. And we're changing our youth program this year to a different group. So I know they're still doing tackle down to second grade, but that's going to be more of an instructional type league. And then they actually start playing again in third and fourth grade. So and then trying to build the middle school schedule up and get coaches in the right spots and yes. lead them the right way and teach them the basics. Too. So when they come to high school and get our weight program implemented into the middle school, which we're trying to get into so that our kids in the middle school understand that lifting weights is part of what you need to do at the high school level to get bigger, sure. stronger, and faster. So, uh, But he's got his hands into everything he can get his hands into. And <laughs> if you're ever around the kids that you know he talks to when they step out in the line and at senior night and he takes his time with each one of the seniors and I, and I get in the line just to talk to all the seniors on the way out or shake their hand and just listen to the comments that he tells them and that they tell him back, which I won't share. You know, <laughs> those are things between him and the kids and the coach that sure. fans don't understand what he talks to them about and how they feel about him and how they, he feels about them. So, Yeah, it's a strong connection. You can tell that between the coaches and, and, and the team. And, hey, yeah. You want that in every, every sport. sport. You're right. Yes. Yeah, I got a couple of coaches that if you look from the outside, you know, they're kind of like a hard peanut. Peanut m and but when you get talking to them, they're really like a milk chocolate one on the inside. So, uh, but from the outside, a parent, you would think they're both as hard as corn. But when you go to their yes. banquets and they start talking about the kids and they have a hard time keeping their emotions coming out of their right. sleeves, and you understand that they're yes. really not the way they appear. And sometimes all the fans get is what they see on the sidelines on a Friday mm -hmm. night or a Saturday at wrestling or basketball. They don't see what happens in behind the scenes on a daily basis at practice and after practice. And how much our coaches truly care about our kids. Well, I think every coach goes into the profession wanting to help the kids and the kids to become responsible adults. And well, I think that's a big thing. You know, there's a lot. There's no doubt in our mind, and I saw we want to win. There's That's oh, the goal, sure. but yes. there's a lot of other things you can teach in sports besides winning and learning how mm -hmm. to win with grace and lose with dignity and do this or vice versa and uh, just the life lessons that you can teach them along the way. Uh, that will provide them more success in the future than just the short four years that right. most of them are going to play sports. You know, and 99% of the athletes we go through Connors is going to terminate in four years because less than 1% yes. is going to get a college scholarship. Yes. So, yes. and go on to play. And sometimes that's the misconception by so many people that they're all going to be division one players. And if you look at all the studies and your research, less than 1% of all the athletes in the United States get a division one scholarship <laughs> with any type of money and less than 3% get any to any level Yes. at any place so count your blessings if you happen to get a piece of that so and in high school you have four years of eligibility and that's it you, they, kids need to realize that and take advantage of that but, uh, uh, we talked to a lot of people about playing and you know the big push anymore has been the single sport athlete and if you talk to the the recruiters for the reds and the scouts for the reds and the and they're not if you listen to the nfl draft more I'd say last, last year, 30 of the top 32 played multiple sports in high school. And they're your best mm -hmm. athletes coming out of the NFL and getting drafted in the first round. And everybody thinks your way to the next level is just focus on that one sport. And I'm telling you, the recruiters and the scouts are telling you they're looking for multiple sport athletes that are good athletes. They can hone into a football player. They can hone into a baseball player, a basketball player. They want a multi-skilled set of person yes. coming in. And we have so many that want to focus on one. When more than one is probably going to be more beneficial to them in the long run. Besides that, academics is going to take you further than most of our athletic abilities too, anyway. So, and our kids are good in the classroom. That's not a problem there. Yeah, I think we're very fortunate. At the banquet, uh, Shane Russell joined us after the banquet and was talking about the high IQ of of these kids that play sports at CHS. Yeah, I, I do a thing with all the GPAs after each season, and right around 50% of our kids will carry a 3.5 or higher during the sports season That's they great. play. And the last I checked at the wintertime, 77% of all of our athletes in the wintertime carried a 3.0 or higher. So first time in the seven years I've been doing, every team in the wintertime as a team had a 3.0 GPA or higher. Wow. So, and that says a lot about our kids and our coaches yes. and what they put the emphasis on and our teachers doing a great job in the classroom, so. Sam, I think you and I both notice uh, when a kid is a freshman, how they're playing as they progress on. Mm -hmm. By the time these kids are seniors, uh, it's been a world of difference in them, and uh, I admire the kids as uh, putting in all the work and all the time, and, and the coaches work with them. Exactly, and, and uh, listening to their coaches and, and yes. doing, it, doing it the right way. The, the ones that are successful uh, follow those instructions, and uh, yes. yeah, it, it is fun to watch them. And, yes. and uh, not to single out anybody, but, but uh, we think about Noah. 
uh, know about and watching him as a freshman yes. play yes. varsity ball and how he came along and, and going back uh, several years and, and Matt Howard came in as a freshman and, and earned his way onto that team, but how he got better mm -hmm. each year. And yes. it, it was individual work uh, for any of those guys or gals, individual work, and uh, as well as uh, paying attention and doing the things that uh, coaches ask them to do. I feel very fortunate here at Connorsville to have the quality of coaches that we have. I mm -hmm. really do. And I think it's, Brent, you have be congratulated on your selection of well, we've been beating the bush. It's just not always me. So there's sometimes no, a group of us, but we try to do our diligence on what we're looking for. Yes. And, and the type of person we want to get in, just as we're, you know, we're interviewing for a girls basketball coach, and we've done that. And um, unfortunately, my volleyball coach turned her resignation in last week because she's moving to Florida with her fiance. They both got <laughs> jobs down there, so they're in their young 20s and no, no kids and no attachments. So there's an opening. His parents live in Florida, so. <laughs> Sure. And that's where they're going to end up. So it's unfortunate because she's done a good job with their volleyball yes. program of, of changing some things around and making it a different way. And hopefully when we get our next hire, we'll just continue that and make it a little better and mm -hmm. continue to let it grow. So we'll wish her the best as she moves on with her life and just won't be in Indiana. <laughs> uh, this week's CHS sports schedule, Monday, baseball at Lawrenceburg, softball at Franklin County, girls tennis at Lawrenceburg. On Tuesday, co-ed track at Lawrenceburg, Franklin County also takes part in that. Baseball at Centerville, softball home with Batesville, tennis at Rushville. On Thursday, softball at Knightstown, baseball home with Lawrenceburg. Tennis at Richmond on Friday, boys golf at Newcastle, baseball at Dayoville, and Saturday there will be softball at Greensburg. In middle school sports, softball Monday at Sunman Dearborn, Tuesday home with Franklin County, Thursday home with Eastern Hancock, Friday they'll be at Greendale. In track and field, Monday at Greenfield, Wednesday at Newcastle, Saturday at Greensburg Invitational, that start time at 10 o'clock in the morning. And golf, Tuesday at St. Mary Rushville, Wednesday at Seton Catholic, Thursday at Eastern Hancock. Baseball at Middle School, Wednesday at Richmond, Thursday at National Trail, Ohio. Saturday home with Anderson for a doubleheader. Start time will be at 11 o'clock. Busy time. Uh, we talked about Lawrenceburg visiting uh, or hosting baseball and tennis today. Uh, do all these guys and gals ride the same bus? No, don't have enough space always. So, And then games get done different times. So you need to have one team done, have to sit for an hour and wait for another one to get finished. So okay. they're on different buses headed to Lawrenceburg, and Lawrenceburg is sending their JV baseball to us. So we're taking on Lawrenceburg and about everything we can today. Or the, at least we're taking on the animals. We've got the Tigers and the Wildcats today. So <laughs> I will say that the track meet uh, Tuesday is not at uh, uh, Lawrenceburg. We had to change that to Franklin County, oh, so okay. it'll be at Franklin County tomorrow. Otherwise, Franklin County wasn't going to have a home home track meet, so they wanted to have one <laughs> for center, senior night. So Lawrenceburg and Franklin County flop. So we'll go to Franklin County this week, next this year, and the next year we'll go to Lawrenceburg. Okay. So, speaking of buses, <laughs> uh, how many miles in the school year did the buses travel, taking students to? Uh, a way event. Yeah, I want uh, you to figure that out. I'll have to refer you to Daryl Drew, the transportation director, on that one. <laughs> when he sits right the bus request, he had to figure up the mileage. Oh, I'm sure you. I'm could sure it's extensive. So. I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's in the thousands, multiples. <laughs> you know, um, every once in a while, I notice and like. Um, one of those middle school schedules that uh, they're playing National Trail of Ohio. Um, we're really closer to a lot of cities in Ohio that, that have some uh, pretty good athletic teams. Is there ever any consideration of, of uh, expanding that any? Or uh, We have a couple times thought about it. The problem is their calendar doesn't roll like ours. So you might be week four in football this year, but for them next year, that might be week five. So there's not, it doesn't always match up as well. And, of course, they have different rules. They can play on Sunday in Ohio, and we can't play on Sundays here. So, but just sometimes it's just how the calendars roll. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think of, of like National Trail and Talawanda and Eaton, um, some of those schools. Uh, Our track team does go within to Eaton, so. within a half an hour. So true. Yeah, but it's hard to give up those rivalries sure. and the teams you've got to play because of your sectional or mm -hmm. your normal rivals or your conference or whatever it happens to be. But we've talked to a couple of them at times, and National Trails have sent kids over to the Wrestling Classic before, so. Mm. Not that it hasn't happened, it just doesn't happen right. as easily because the way the schedules change and mm. calendars roll a little bit differently. 
And so. sometimes rules might be a little different. But uh, Yeah, if you go there, you got to play by their rules. When you come here, you got to play by our rules. So mm -hmm. we're not going on a Sunday, so. No. <laughs> but uh, Do they have a mercy rule in football? Going to have one. <laughs> Starting I, next year. I, you, I know you talked about that uh, in Indiana being effective for... Uh, I don't know about Ohio. I'm not every school's, not every state's the same, but there are a lot of states that do have a mercy rule, so... <laughs> We're not the first one, and we won't be the last one getting in on that one. But hopefully, we'll never have to use it. I hope, unless we're on the good well, side. Well, I was going to say, unless it's our benefit, right? right. Correct. Right. We'll we'll accept That's that. That's the goal. That's right. That's right. Um, I think you talked about losing one of the teams on the girls' schedule, was it? Yeah, Muncie Central. Okay. Dropped us. Uh, I think. Don't quote me, but I think they might be doing a county tournament because they said something about playing some area teams in a day in a tournament type thing. So I'm assuming it could be a Delaware county tournament thing. So, but we're looking, you know, and we dropped Garen Catholic last year and we're going to play uh, with Southport at Southport next year. It'll be us and Southport will take on Decatur Central and Cardinal Ritter on the same day we played Cardinal Ritter last year. So we'll play one of those in the morning, and then we'll play one of them in the afternoon. So each of us oh. will play two games that day. Mm -hmm. And then that'll rotate. One year will be at Southport, one year will be at our place, one year will be at Decatur Central. And I just don't know if Ritter's got a big enough space for all of us, and they may have another gym that I don't know about. But uh, Gym's not very, not very not big. Very big. <laughs> so, nice, nice facility. But right, and I don't know if they got another one close in that area where they could play, because I know they've talked about playing the JV too, so. I know we can work that out with the bowl and the arena, but uh, I'm not sure about how close Ritter's other gym may be. I've never been in it. I know Decatur Central and Southport will have one real close, so we'll see. But that'll happen the weekend that we normally played Ritter. Instead of Ritter on that Saturday, we'll play in that little, you want to call it shootout or whatever you want to call it. So, We're a week away from uh, the alignment, the IHSAA, uh, every two years, and this affects the postseason, correct? Yeah, uh, I haven't seen the agenda for this week, but we have a board meeting on Monday, so uh, I know it's getting close to those things being finalized for the fall and the winter. We won't do the spring until August once baseball and softball is all done. So we'll start to find out here in the end of April, 1st of May, where all the uh, sectional alignments will be for next school year. So see where we're headed since we dropped to 3A in many of the classes. So Should Connersville not go north but go south? We would probably have the biggest gym. You guys are really booking this one, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, once we figure out the community wants. See, oh, I don't have a problem with hosting it. So <laughs> once we get the alignments done, then the host school, somebody in the alignment will have a meeting and we'll all decide where the sections are going to be held at. Uh, our problem in the last section when we went, when we were in 4A, when we were with Newcastle, Ooh. we wanted it. Newcastle wanted it. Richmond wanted it. Muncie Central wanted it, Greenfield <laughs> wanted it. So when you can't decide, state assigns it. So <laughs> henceforth, it got assigned to Newcastle. But uh, uh -huh. I tried to come up with an arrangement for the four biggest schools to say, if hey, we'll host these two hosts it this year. If we're still in alignment in two years, then these two get to host it the next two years. So yes. we try to work those deals if you can. If you, but some want to play the barter game. Well, we'll host basketball. We'll give you basketball if you let us have baseball. Or <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. But there's some. There's some people that try to barter that way. So, but if we're, you know, if we're the biggest gym by far, we're going to try to try to get it. We'd love to have it back. So, oh yes. It's yeah. just when we all can't agree, the state steps in and assigns. So, um, Greensburg, close, size wise. Um, I know when we had it there a few years ago when we were in 3A, um, it was a problem between games, um, getting people in and out and off the floor. But, uh, but yeah, it's just still, good help. seats about five thousand and. Right, we're, we're, about eight, we're, we're about 800 more than they are, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, we'll be in the mix when we get in there. Once we figure out where we're going and we all sit down together and talk, somebody will host that meeting. And Sometimes that, it's the first of the alphabet of the groups in there, and sometimes it's the al end of the alphabet that's hosted. So we'll see where that goes. But is that um, Greens, Green, I call it the Greensburg sectional now. Uh, is that a seven-team field? As I think it was seven-team last year. Yeah. Six and schools in EI Madison. In Madison. EIAC. Minus East Central and Madison. Madison. And then Madison. So it's an easy, I mean, when we went 3-8, we went south the last time. Right, there, right. So. right. But I know Blackford's dropped a 2-A, if I remember right, so there's also going to be a spot in north. But So where do they send us? Depends on who's in the committee and who's drawing the lines. And so... Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll see that. I'll get the agenda this week and see if that's on our agenda. So, should be seven close. teams. Is that the maximum section? Are there, are there any eight teams? Oh yeah, there's a lot of eight okay, teams. Okay, eight's about the maximum you can have. So okay, I wasn't to sure. make it work out the way it needs to work out. So 
But if uh, Newcastle drops down to five, they probably would find them a six team. Yeah, they do, they typically don't like five team sectionals. There are right. a few out there, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. makes it makes it a little harder, easier for somebody to get in the finals pretty quick. So. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm sure we'll be considered where we're not only where we're sat in enrollment, but where we sit locationally, geographically. We're kind of in that gray area in mm -hmm. the middle, so where we can end up north or south, and we'll see. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want to go back into any like we did the one year, and everybody passed us going to Richmond. <laughs> yeah, that, it was I us. It was one. us. I never figured that one out. schools, and, but and we, they didn't like it either. No, because Anderson passed us going to Richmond, and we passed right. Anderson <laughs> going to Indy. So. But uh, Conroe will not be playing in a R Richmond sectional, though, that's for sure. That's correct, because Richmond sure. is not dropping down to 3A, so that's we, won't right. be in with, we won't be in with the people we were in with last year. So mm -hmm. we'll just be interested to see where we go, and I don't have my preference. As Coach Brown says, we got beat by the sectional winner to the south, <laughs> and we got beat by the sectional winner to the north on the same weekend. So it's returning to Newcastle and Greensburg is who he's referring to, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If uh, okay. we would go north at... Um, makes it uh, a harder job for you to get some of those teams scheduled. Uh, Just depending on who's in there. You know, Delta we already have. And, and uh, who else? Yorktown? And, Yorktown and, we don't have. We have tried to pick Yorktown up before in the past, but now they got a new AD, maybe Paul and I is a little more. And if we were going there, they might have more incentive to. Exactly. If we're in the sectional, same, most of those coaches yeah. are going to want to play us. So I we'll don't just remember see who else. Blackford, you mentioned. Blackford was there, but I think they dropped a 2A, so. I'm trying to think who was all in that area. Anderson's 4A. Munsee Central is now back to 4A because when they consolidated, they went up. So mm -hmm. you're starting to reach further north when you get up in that Jay County, I think, is down to 3A in basketball. So mm -hmm. you just never know where they'll pull in from. And that's the hard when you get on the outside edges of the state. Geographically, you get so much more spread out and my, not sure where you're going to be. My former partner, uh, Brett, had sent me a... Uh, note and said that uh, if we would go north to Newcastle, uh, there'd be uh, an opportunity for us to play Angola where he is now uh, in a regional, which uh, Angola's a long, I mean, oh, that's yeah. state line, Michigan. <laughs> that's a long way. Well, if you think about it, two years ago, Rushville Lady Lions won the regional or sectional number in Jasper trying to get in. It was snowing. Yeah. So they got they had to drive all the way to Jasper to get to yeah. the second round. So that's a good four hour drive, three and a half, four hour drive. So this classes is good and classes are bad. So I know you can't find Mostly anything bad. good. You can't find anything good with the class, but Mostly bad. some people think it's good. I'm a traditionalist, so I could go back to one class. Yeah. It won't and happen. I came from a smaller school and I would have still said that. <laughs> so So uh, schools have a, a say in where they want to play. I mean I know like here we had a Hosted a 2A girls sectional at one time? Regional. Boys well, we had 2A right? regional, and then we had a 3A girls sectional about okay, five well, years ago. And then they moved that to Greenfield because mm -hmm. the schools that were involved. Well, we went back up to 4A, so. Okay. Once we I jumped. was thinking that. When we had it with Anderson. And that was yeah, a lot but of But we hosted there. a 2A boys regional. For yeah, a we did. And that was asked by the state if we wanted to have it. And okay, right. Then the state decided there was three any schools coming out here and only one of us, so they moved it to Greenfield. Okay, so. I remember there was something. It used to be three of the 2A classes around on the edge and then one Indy school. Then it became three Indy schools and one over here, so somehow got back closer <laughs> to Indy. I think Park Tudor was here that year, did they? Park Tudor, they were here with Yogi those four years. Right, did they win? Uh, title, yeah, yeah, one yeah, year later. They, they did, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, uh, they've had Broad Ripple and Speedway. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good tournament. Beach Grove. Uh, Beach Grove? Nah, they didn't come that one year. But yeah. Winchester, Triton Central, Winchester. Winchester. Here. That's when we had the three. Mm -hmm. Them in Union County were here, and Lawrenceburg mm -hmm. came up that one year, and South Ripley came up that one year. So, it's been a while, though. Things change, but we're counting on you to straighten it out when you go to Indianapolis. I'll do my best, but I'm only one voice of 19, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Brad, for joining us. As always, it's uh, been a pleasure to have you and bringing all the news about CHS Sports to us on the Spartan Sports Report. Always excited to talk about our Spartans. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Good evening. <laughs>